Hello again, Saints. I want to thank everyone for tuning in to another Thursday night Bible study where we're going over the doctrine of who God has called us to be in Christ. And we are, of course, continuing on in our Romans chapter 16 study. A very vital and very important studies uh, that we are looking at here in Romans chapter 16 here. And we're looking at Romans chapter 16. This is Romans 16 verse uh, lesson, sorry, sorry, lesson 10. And we're looking at the uh, divisions and, off and divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you have learned. Um, and we are looking at the New Testament. We're continuing our study with the New Testament and the Lord's table. Actually, we finished the Lord's, we finished the New Testament, but in looking at everything we're going to be looking at, um, the New Testament is wrapped up all wrapped up in that as well. Also the spirit and the Lord's table itself. The the some would call it communion. Some people call it um, the Lord's Supper. Uh, most of the world calls it the Lord's Supper, and they are speaking of the what we're going to be going over, the verses that we're going over, and uh, a particular uh, doctrine or action that that some would take. And I, you know, I did a, a three-part study on that issue there, uh, the Lord's Table, and we looked at uh, the issues that it is spiritual; it ought it ought not be done by a uh, carnal carnal uh, partaking, so to speak. Um, but some, some would do that. Some would uh, view it as a fellowship meal and things of that nature there. Um, but no one will never, will, will ever teach on when it is to be done, what type of elements, um, how oft do you do, do, do you do it? And the idea is that, um, we can, we can remember the Lord's death till he comes till he come every single day. We can partake of the Lord's table, the, the, the cup or the bread every day. It is being done right now. And, and you're going to see that the Lord's cup is the ministry. It's spiritual. It's not a physical cup, but it's a, it, it, it's, and it's not partaking in, in of, a, of a juice or something like that. And, and if you will, um, I, again, as I said before, I did a three-part study on that, and it's very um, um, concise and, and, and act, uh, uh, all. It's a lot of verses there, folks. It's a lot of verses being used there to to show how to observe the Lord's death till He come. It, it, as the Lord says, as oft as you do it in remembrance of Me. And, and, and the thing that said the outset there, why this is so vital to understand, when you see what Paul is making mention at Romans chapter 16, and we'll look at that in a second, when he says, when he says, uh, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which we have learned and avoid them. Folks, the consequences of not learning the doctrine that, that is associated, that we are looking at here in the book of Romans, the, the, the dire consequences of it is that you will be a Corinthian or a Galatian. And we have way too, we have a lot of uh, pastors uh, that are Galatian and Corinthian. And it might sound, it, it might sound harsh to say that, but it's, it, it, it's sad. Because what I mean by that is, is that the carnal things that they teach, when you look at, when you look at the book of Corinthians, as the book of Corinthians start off, Paul start, Paul says that, that there be no divisions among them. And what do you think? Well, we're going to be looking at the divisions and, and that God uh, God desired that, that the saints have no divisions among them. That there be no divisions in the body or schisms and in the body that, 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 that he's going to call the one bread. And that we are to partake, we are to partake of each other in love, selfless love. And we're, we're going to see that. And, but when you see in 1 Corinthians, the ailment that, that starts off there is, I hear there's divisions among you and I partly believe it. And all the things about the wisdom of men and, and all these different things, we find that 
amongst many, many that rightly divide the word of truth. And that's because the failure to understand these particular doctrines. And it is so vital to get this. But come over, let's come over to Romans 16 and let's take a look at uh, just verse 17 uh, at, at, right there. It's Romans 16, verse 17. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you have learned, and avoid them. As I said before, if these doctrines are not learned, you will be a Corinthian or a Galatian at best. The doctrines not understood by the, these are the doctrines that are uh, not understood by the saint to be of the same mind. And that is, we looked at failure to understand and appreciate Paul's special apostleship as the apostle to the Gentiles. And as I said before, even those that rightly divide the word of truth, they fail to see this because they'll say Paul was, uh, they, they'll say that Paul was preaching to the little flock and they'll say we're Acts 28ers and, and all these different things. Uh, the other thing is failure to see that justification unto eternal life in any age of time has always been by Faith alone in the Redeemer alone. We looked at that as well. And 75% of all that rightly divide the word of truth do not understand this doctrine. The other thing is failure to operate upon the spiritual mind. And there are a, a, a lot of people that understand the word rightly, rightly divided as well that that fails to operate upon the spiritual mind. They'll say certain things like, God put on my heart to say this, or they'll say, as the Holy Ghost or Holy Spirit leads us in prayer, or they'll, they'll pray for understanding, uh, um, they'll pray for traveling grace, and all these different things that we've all heard. Many pastors that rarely divide the word of truth say these certain things, or God, uh, Bless them with children. That's not spiritual minded. Because what about the saints that cannot have children? What about the saints that, that don't have traveling grace on the road and so on and such? The other thing is failure to operate upon, failure to understand the real love of God. And we looked at that, what the true, real love of, selfless love of God is all about. The other thing was failure to understand the spirit. We looked at that a few weeks back, then failure to understand the New Testament. We've looked at that as well last, last time. Now we're looking at the Lord's table. And the other thing we're going to look at is uh, failure to understand our adoption as sons unto the Father. The next thing we're going to look at is um, failure to understand the dispensation of Gentile grace that we live in. And these are all things here that uh, we looked at when we were in Romans 15 about how to oper how to how to have the same understanding or how to be of the same mind how to walk by the same rule i did a, a nine part study in how to be of the same mind and you know in in the ones that have watched that i do appreciate um you know do appreciate that but there are many that that um, you know would would assume, and even in the studies now, you know, um, we just look at it, just swipe right past it, and they rather click on some someone um, that they've watched before who they feel they feel that is going to enrich them doctrinally, um, but actually just keeping them on the same treadmill and leaving out the foundational doctrines that's contained in the book of Romans, the ones, the doctrines that which we ought to have learned. But let's let's get right into the verses, and we're going to be looking at um, the Lord's table, and or some will call the um, communion. But again, for them who uh, assume that it's a fellowship meal, as I said before in the other studies, the only one that benefits from that is the the saints themselves they're the only ones benefiting from a fellowship meal 
that's that's actually ungodly because God's word doesn't say anything about a fellowship meal. You can go all the way back and whatever and say, well, yeah, they 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 used to uh, get together and they. That's not what the doctrine that we're taught. That's not what God's word teaches. And you can't just give a few verses and say, oh, thus saith the Lord, uh, uh, this, must be, this must be what Paul is speaking of in 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Remember, there were divisions among the body of Christ. They had an ailment, an ailment because they were ignorant of the things Paul taught in Romans, that, you, that body of doctrine you see in Romans chapter 15. But Romans, actually the whole book of Romans. But let's move on. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Look at verse 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. And let's take a look at verse 9. God is faithful by whom ye, ye were called unto the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Um, now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing, that there be no divisions among you, but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. Now, I want you to keep all that doctrine in the back of your mind, because when you see that ye all speak the same thing, that there be no divisions among you, that ye be perfectly joined together, in the same mind, same judgment. No, but notice before that, verse 9, call unto the fellowship of our Lord Jesus Christ. Doesn't all this thing seem like a oneness, a body, a, a unison? Or some would say communion. Look at uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Look at verse 17. Now in this that I declare unto you, I praise you not that ye come together, not for the better, but for the worse. Notice, come together. At, they ought to be come together as one. For first of all, when you come together, notice this, in the church, I hear that there be divisions among you, and I partly believe it. For there must be also heresies among you, that they which are approved may be made manifest among you. Now, again, we can look at that verse 19, what does Paul mean by they that are approved may be made manifest? Uh, but we're, 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 not, we're dealing with the division and the ailment that these saints had here. There were divisions among them. Paul says, notice it's in the church, a church divided. Now remember, it's the body of Christ, so there are divisions there. And, and we, we oftentimes just go right past this and not, not understanding that these divisions are not, are actually, Satan is behind these the divisions themselves. And you're going to see that. Um, look at uh, tw verse 20. When you come together, therefore, into one place. Remember, it said, come together in the church. Now, when you come, there, come together, therefore, into one place, this is not to eat the Lord's Supper. It tells you right here. It's not to eat the Lord's Supper. Some people would say what he's saying is when you guys get together, you are, you're not acting like you're supposed to. You're acting like you're coming together not to eat the Lord's Supper. That's not what's being said here either. For in eating, it's letting you know when you, when you come together and eat in the church, this is what happens here. For in eating, everyone taketh before his own supper. One is hungry, another is drunken. What? Have not houses to eat and drink in? Or despise ye the church of God and shame them that have not? What shall I say unto you? Shall I praise you in this? I praise you not. And see, Paul is not uh, worrying about their dietary intake. Remember, Paul himself said over there in 1 Corinthians, he made mention in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, um, actually, um, yeah, chapter 2, he made mention, he says, now ye are full, now ye are rich. And, and he made mention that, that that they were, he said, he, verse 11, he said, even unto this present, present hour we both hunger and thirst and are naked and buffeted, have no certain, certain dwelling place. 
So how how could Paul be be uh, I'm not saying worrying about, but how could Paul be reproving them because there are many many dying because the, these people are getting to the food before they do? That's not the case at all. These people could have went home and ate. <laughs> That's why he says, "Have ye not houses to eat? <coughs> excuse me, and drink in?" Paul knew that they could eat and drink in their own houses. That wasn't the case here. The case was there were divisions among the body of Christ. But we today assume that we're to show a victory, <coughs> excuse me, and a fellow have a fellowship meal. And that right there is, is bringing forth honor and glory unto the Lord. That's not what, what God is uh what God would have the saints to do. He would have you to get out there and take his word and bring forth. And, and 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 show and make a show, and the show is is remembering the door Lord's death until He come. Taking the ministry, the cup is the ministry. This cup is the New Testament in my blood. The Lord said. But look at uh, verse twenty three. For I received the, of the Lord that which I also delivered unto you that the Lord Jesus the same night in which He was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This, notice this, this do remembrance of me, when, when talking about the body or the bread. Now, you, you yourselves know, we are called that one bread. The body themselves, the body of the Lord, we are called the one bread, the one body. And he's making mention here. To, to do this in remembrance of me. Sorry, I muted myself. But he's, he's saying, I don't know if you can, hopefully you can hear me now, but uh, he's saying, do this in remembrance of me and when when speaking of the bread the body but he's saying here also he's saying um uh about the cup notice this here in verse 25 after the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped saying this cup is the new testament of my blood this do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me now what do you think he means by breaking the bread or, or partaking of the bread and uh do do drink it drinking the cup now we have to understand it's spiritual everything that 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 the lord has um how the lord works or or, or deals with us and i'll just use that word there it's going to be spiritual there's going to be no physical element to it god's not going to a, a, a work in our physical circumstances. He's not going to give us anything on a physical um, of a physical matter. But many teach that, and, and then that's not the case at all. It's it's strictly spiritual, folks. But let's just get into the verse. We got a lot of verse to cover. Come over to John thirteen. <coughs> Excuse me, John thirteen. Let's take a look at verse 4. John 13, verse 4. He rises from supper. He rise, rises from supper, laid down, laid aside his garments. And he took a towel and girded himself. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and began to wipe them with the towel wherewith he was girded. Then cometh he to Simon Peter and said unto him, Lord, dost thou then come cometh to he cometh he to Simon Peter, and Peter said unto him, Lord, dost thou wash my feet? And Jesus said unto him, What I do what I do thou knowest not, but thou shalt know hereafter. And Peter said unto him, Thou shalt never wash my feet. And Jesus answered him, if I wash not thee, thou hast no part with me. Simon Peter said unto him, Lord, not my feet only, 
but also my hands and my head. What Peter was making known to the Lord, well, if this is the case, wash me every bit. And what that meant, what he's saying is about having part. But notice the part there that that's talking about the ministry. That's talking about what he was going to partake of. And, and he was going to be a partaker of. And see, that's that this is what goes uh over the heads, um, or should I say this is something that goes um, unnoticed when, when, when looking at this issue here, that what the Lord is talking about. Some people look at this and say, oh, this is the feet washing. The Lord is showing humility here. Oh, look, look at him. He, 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 he's uh, 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 given on to the apostles how they're to, how they're to uh, uh, live and all this other stuff. And, but what's, what you see taking place here is the Lord showing selfless love he's showing on to, to onto his apostles that even one who's going to be as 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 the greater he can be as one that's going to serve and he wants them to do this uh uh he wants that love to be among them but look at um um and that's why peter says not my feet only but my hands and, and head also and Jesus, look at verse 10. Jesus said, said to him, <clears throat> he that washed, he that is washed needeth not save wash to wash his feet, but is clean every whit, and ye are all clean, but not all. For he knew who would betray him. Therefore he said, Ye are not all clean. Look at um look at verse 12, John 13, verse 12. So after he had washed their feet, he had taken his garments and was set down again. He said unto them, Know ye what I have done to you? Ye call me Master and Lord, and ye say, Well, for so I am. And if I then, your Lord and Master, have washed your feet, ye also ought to wash one another's feet. Notice the selfless example being given there. <coughs> Excuse me. And he says, um, uh, verse, uh, yeah, verse 14. If I then, your Lord and Master, have washed your feet, ye also ought to wash one another's feet. Notice the identity that I'm doing this to you. You ought to do this as well. Verse 15. For I have given you an, an example, example, that ye should do as I have done to you again he's he's explaining that they ought to walk in his steps look at verse 34 a new commandment i give unto you that ye love one another as i have loved you that ye also love one another by this all men shall know that ye are my disciples if ye have loved one to another now we looked at this before in looking at the new testament now as you see here the lord is explaining to his apostles that they are going to have love one to another. But not just any love, but selfless love. And a few of them was brothers. They they loved each other. Some of them knew each other and loved each other. Just But no, it was a specific type of love that he wanted them to have. He wanted them to possess the love he has and the love his father has. And, and the love they share, the, the, that oneness there. And... This is why Paul brings this um, into remembrance to the Corinthians. The Corinthians were divided. They were, think about the ailments they had. They were divided. They, they, they didn't want their education. They were babes. Their heart was not enlarged. They, they, they were um, not understanding the, the resurrection properly. And I'm not talking about Christ's resurrection. They, they understood that. But some of them didn't understand that there would be resurrection of even themselves uh, uh, until the end time or whatever. <laughs> so um, Paul was correcting. I mean, th that's just a few things. There were mo much, much more things that they had that they that they were doing that was wrong. And Paul was reproving them over and over because of there were foundational truths that they were lacking but as you've seen there uh 
the Lord was giving the apostles a, a education in selflessness and the New Testament. Remember he said a new commandment I give unto you. And the New Testament is founded upon selfless love. And we've seen that last time, last week there. Um, but let, let's move on. Let's just get into the verses here. Come over to um, Luke 22. Luke 22. Let's take a look at verse 14. Luke 22, 14, verse 14. And when the hour was come, he sat down and the twelve apostles with him. And he said unto them, With desire I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say unto you, I will not any more eat thereof until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Notice it. Well, what, what does he mean by it? He's talking about the ministry. He's talking about the, the actual um, fulfillment of the kingdom. And that's what he mean fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And but that's going to be those disciples, which he is the true vine. The disciples are the branches, and they were going to bear fruit, bring forth fruit. And when you when you have someone that that um, is growing fruit, or in this case, what's being spoken of about the true vine and the branches, and they're going to bring forth fruit, and then he's going to partake of it. Or some would partake of the, the fruit of the, the vine or the fruit of the, yeah, the fruit of the vine. Or if it was grapes and it'd be wine and things, whatever, whatever. But we don't, ugh. but the idea is that when you're seeing this here, that's why he's going to say here um, in verse 18, drink of the fruit of the vine. And that's that's what the, the apostles produced. And, and, and and, and that's, in a sense, that you look at what produce is called um, in looking at that as, uh, as well. But look at verse 17. And he took the cup and gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it amongst yourselves. For I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God come. Now, what he's saying, as I said before, that that's going to be the fulfillment of what the apostles produced being them that were preaching the New Testament to, to the hearers and that when they accepted it and became justified unto eternal life and then they got the sanctifying doctrine uh, of, of the word, the, the, the spirit, the doctrine of the Lord, the cup, their cup, their cup was going to be, um, they were going to take their cup and they were going to uh, give that ministry over to the people. And the Lord was going to partake of that fruit in that kingdom. Look at verse 19. That, that's what he's explaining to them about what that cup signified unto them. He's not saying you, you guys just uh, here's just a little bit more volume left. There's you guys partake of it. And, 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 you know, when you get around each other, just just think about me, how we did this. This is going to be symbolic. You know, when you guys come together, I'm not going to be here anymore. But when you come around, hey, remember how we did things. That's not what the Lord is discussing here. The Lord is giving them vital doctrine that is going to be so important. This is going to be done in the kingdom, fulfilled when it's fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And, and what it, it all, it's all about, it's all about the word of God being preached by these apostles concerning the Lord and Savior and that New Testament that's going to be preached. And that's why he says, take this and divide it amongst yourself. He, remember, they're all going to partake of it. And you see people today when they do uh, the Lord's Supper or communion, whatever they want to call it, everybody has their own little cup and they get go get some juice from somewhere. And then they say, well, this is doing the Lord the body of the Lord and the blood of the Lord and all this other stuff that, that that's carnal. You, you don't, you can't find that in God's word, how to do it. How much should they partake? How much should they drink and, and eat? Where should you buy it from? No, no one is going to give a study on how to observe the Lord's uh, supper or, or communion or whatever you want to call it. 
But what man will do, he'll follow the tradition of man and he'll he'll either do it or he won't do it. But he's only going to do it the way he was taught. He's not going to do it by what God's word says. because God's word doesn't teach that. Well, what God's word does teach is we're to remember his death until he come. And it says, as oft as you do it in remembrance of me. It's supposed to be done every day, all day, folks. Look at um, look at verse 19. And he took the bread and gave thanks and break it and gave it unto them, saying, this is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. Remember, the supper had already ended. He's not saying, oh, I got one piece of bread here. So uh, <laughs> uh, let's. I'm just showing humility, and I'm going to share it with all of you. That's not what they ate. They already ate. <laughs> but they knew exactly what the Lord was talking about when he said the cup and the bread. They knew exactly what he was talking about because he already talked to them about what the cup meant. Over and over he told them what the cup meant, and we're going to look at some of those some of those times there uh, in a little bit. But um, but he may mention this do in remembrance of me because they're going to be partaking of the body. That's that oneness there that, that we that we talked about earlier. That oneness, selfless love, having the same care for one another. Look at verse 20. Likewise, also the cup after supper. Notice it's after supper. Same. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you. Remember, he hadn't died yet. But he's explaining to them that this that the cup is the New Testament. They were going to be doing that in remembrance of him. The New Testament in remembrance of him. Not having a fellowship meal. Not, not uh, sipping on a little juice or and, and break and, ha and a little wafer or something like that. Look at verse 21. Now, after he says this, notice the next verse. But be, in verse 21, but behold, the hand of him that betrayeth me is with me on the table. And we know he's speaking about Judas there. But why do you think he says this right after he's talking about the ministry? Right after he's talking about the bread and the cup, the new the new test doctrine of the New Testament, he talks about betrayal and he's talking about that because when Paul talks to us about about living on to the father serving him the next thing he talks about is the temptation the tempting of this world he talks about uh, the, the world the effects of the world that can hinder the Saints growth and he's explaining he's explaining these apostles to beware, to beware and watch. But but look at look at verse 22. And truly the Son of Man goeth as, as it was determined, but woe unto the man by whom he is betrayed. And they noticed this, and they began to inquire among themselves which of them it was who that should do this. Now, do this thing. They know it's one of them, but they're they're gonna they're trying to figure out who it would be. But notice the next thing. And there was also a strife among them, which of them should be accounted the greatest. Now, what do you think that has to do with what the Lord said? Why do you think they got on the whole issue about that? Because they, they start thinking, well, it's not me because I'm, I'm this. Or why would I do that when, when I'm that? And he said unto them, the kings of the Gentiles exercise lordship over them. And they that that exercise authority upon them are called benefactors but ye shall not be so he that is greatest among you let him be as the younger and he let he that is chief as he that doth serve now why did the lord have to come and tell him this when he gave him that already in in john 13. <laughs> he already told him that in john 13 and he's he's competing saying don't act like the gentiles act the gentiles will have ones acting as Lord over another one, another one's their servant and, and things like that. But he was explaining to them about not being like the Gentiles. Then you're going to see him later explain to them about that, about the temptation of this world. And that's why he made mention when he mentioned the doctrine, he mentioned the ministry, 
He mentioned what's going to be fulfilled in the kingdom, and then he said, Behold the hand of him as with me. Uh, behold the hand of him that betrayeth me is with me on the table. And, and he wanted to warn the apostles of, of this. And then he turned right around, and then there was divisions among them. There was strife. They were not as one. What he prayed, and, and, and he asked the Father that they be one, as, as he says, as we are one. But this is why Paul is bringing this up to the Corinthians. Because about the whole, remember what, the, what Paul told those Corinthians about the night the Lord was betrayed. And that's significant to see there. But let's just get right back into the verses because, again, we got a lot of verses to cover in a short amount of time. And, and that's another thing. Um, you know, when you're looking at issues like this, um, you have to use a lot of verses. Anytime you want to confirm God's word um, with the doctrine of God's word itself, because many people can preach God's word they, 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 all the time. Well, what you're going to get is a lot of lip service and not a lot of verses. But you have to have the verses to confirm truth. Because men all the time, men can, and women can use God's word of truth and use some verses. But after a while, the spiritual mind will be able to see that what's truth and what's not truth. But... Let's get into the verses there. Look at Luke 22 again. Look at verse uh, verse 27 now. Luke 22 verse, yeah, we'll just pick it back up where we were. Um, for whether, verse 27, for whether is greater, he that sitteth at meat or he that serveth, is not he that sitteth at meat, but I am among you as he that serveth. Remember again, John 13, he washed their feet. Ye are, notice verse 28, ye are they which have continued with me in my temptations. You see what he makes mention about temptations? He is explaining to them, you saw how I was tempted of the devil. You saw how I was, I've been tempted. You continue with me and, and, and now you're tempted? That's what he's going to be explaining to them. And what we'll probably do um, maybe the next next week we'll look at the temptations or the watching that he gave onto them um, that's associated with the cup and the bread of the Lord, because uh, a lot of the a lot of the ministry is going to be the temptation of the world. What is going to be also remember, yea, all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Persecution is one thing that'll get someone to to uh, be tempted of the world and want to throw in the towel, but that's again, uh, you. But you you see that there. Come over to First Corinthians chapter ten. First Corinthians chapter ten, and let's take a look at the Lord giving Paul giving um, onto these Corinthians something about the temptation. Of the world and, and notice this is right before he talks to them about the lord's table the lord's cup and the and the bread of the lord notice uh, it, it, you wonder why it's it uh, he talks about this first and then he says about the divisions notice this first one first corinthians 10 verse 1 moreover brethren i would not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea. And all were baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. All did eat the same spiritual meat, and all did drink the same, all did drink the same spiritual drink, for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. Now, again, you see, and you know, that you see Christ was even when they were in the wilderness there. That was, even though they didn't even have to know him by name, Jesus, but remember it says Christ. But again, many people would, would assume, oh, Israel, Israel wasn't justified unto eternal life. They, uh, they were being saved and, and all these other things. But notice it's spiritual, drink and spiritual meat. 
Look at verse 5. But with many of them God was not well pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Now these things were our examples to the intent that we should not lust after evil things. And um, as they also lusted, neither be ye idolaters as some of them. As it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. And I just want to stop here for a second. You notice how he's, Paul is, he's telling them about these temptations here. And what he's explaining about that being exa examples to the intent that they, or we should not have lust after evil things as they also lusted. Well, why do you think he's mentioning this again to these Corinthians right before he's talking to them about being, div being divided because of the temptation about the watching that they ought to have been watching, but they weren't. They fell victim to this world. Look at our verse, um, verse 8. Neither let us commit fornication as some of them committed and fell one day three and 20,000. Neither let us tempt Christ as some of them also tempted and were destroyed of, this, of, of serpents. Neither murmur ye as some of them also murmured and was destroyed the destroyer. Now all these things happen unto them for examples, and they are written for our animation upon whom the ends of the world are come. Now notice when he says all these things, he's not saying that a person will go to hell if you do this. And I know you know that. But what he's explaining, them who are sanctified act as if though you are sanctified. Why would you want to walk that way? Why would you want to... To, notice he says to the intent that we should not lust after evil things that they are also lust after. Neither let us. Notice Paul putting himself in that as well. Paul knew he couldn't lose his salvation. And there's not a penalty that if a person was, was that, that they would, uh, God's going to take back the gift that was given, that, they, that he gave onto them. But. That's not the issue there, but the issue there is that it was spiritual, folks. You see that it was spiritual, spiritual cup, spiritual meat. And we're going to look at uh, some more issues here about the cup itself being spiritual, the bread being spiritual, and, and, and why that's significant to understand. Because when some say today, oh, we're doing a fellowship meal, well, that's carnal. There, there, there's no spiritual, um, spiritual application to that. And they'll say, Oh, well, we're doing a victory fellowship meal. And we're doing a victory fellowship meal. And, and we're putting the cross on display before the angelic realm when we do that. Yeah, we, what are you, 15 people around doing that? 30 people? Whatever the issue is. What, what is, how is victory? The victory is when you take the word and you take or, or take the cup, the ministry. And you preach the ministry, and and, and not not just preach it, but 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 uh, bring forth fruit, where others can be edified and bring forth fruit, and, and and the idea is laboring in the ministry. Remember, that's why he made mention about them they can about them drinking unworthily, or eating of the body of the Lord unworthily, partaking of the bread of the Lord unworthily, because they they wanted to be partakers of the Lord's table and the table of devils. They want to have one foot in the ministry, one foot out there in the world. But this is, again, as I said before, a doctrine that needs to be understood, not just this one, but the Spirit, the, the New Testament. These are all tied into one. <laughs> but and, and you'll see that in a second. But let's look at uh, John 18. Let's look at John 18, and we're going to look at about the cup and the um, bread. Well, actually, the cup, is it physical or spiritual? Let's take a look at that. John 18, verse 10. Then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it and smote the high priest's servant and cut off his right ear. And the servant's name was Malchus. Uh, then Jesus said unto Peter, Put up thy sword in the, into thy sheath, the cup which my father hath given me, shall I not drink it? Now when Peter took the sword and drew it and cut off uh, the guy's ear, the Lord said, the cup which my father hath given me, shall I not drink it? What do you 
think that cup is all about? What cup do you think he's talking about? His father gave him a physical cup? No. Peter knows that that's what the Lord is about to go do. That's the ministry. That's the Lord, what the Lord had. And we might even get a chance to look at the Psalms. When Psalms 23, when it talks about, um, uh, uh, talks about, about the the whole thing about the Lord is my shepherd and shall not want and all these different you know things it, it, you know that there but when it talks about my cup runneth over and all these things we we, we use the terminology when we'll say hey I got a lot on my plate everyone knows what that's what that means we know that they actually don't really actually have a plate and has a, have a lot of we know that's talking about what we have to do but we oftentimes, when we see the word cup in the Bible, we assume it means go get go get some wafer and wine and things like that. And that's not what it's talking about. The cup which my father hath given me, shall I not drink it? When the Lord drink, getting ready to drink what the cup of the cup the father gave him was when he was getting ready to fulfill his ministry. That's the cup that he was getting ready to drink of. And we ourselves can drink of a cup. We have a cup as well. Look at um, Mark 10. Look at Mark chapter 10. And that's what the Lord was telling the Corinthians. You have a cup also. But you don't want to drink of the cup unworthily either. But come over to Mark, uh, Mark chapter 10. <clears throat> Give me a chance to get there. Mark chapter 10. Let's look at verse 37. Mark 10 verse 37. Mark 10, verse 37, they said unto him, grant us that we may sit one on thy right hand and the other on thy left hand in thy glory. Notice in thy glory in the kingdom. But Jesus said unto them, ye know not what ye ask. Can ye drink of the cup that I drink of and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? Notice that he drinks of. The Lord is, is, is putting this in a, in, a, in, a, in a present tense. He says, know ye, know ye now, can ye drink of the cup that I drink of? That ministry. And baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with. with you see a, that baptism that the Lord has? And we know what, the, what a baptism is, folks. A baptism is a... Uh, um, when you look at that, there it's a setting apart. It's an identity. It's a purification unto holiness, and, and it's it's a sanctifying. And the Lord, that baptism that He was talking about, is 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 what is also part of the ministry, His identity, or in, in what He was being. And and look at a. Uh, uh, what they said in verse 39, and they said unto him, we can. And Jesus said unto them, ye shall indeed drink of the cup that I drink of. And the, again, the Lord does not have a physical cup. He's talking about the, the, the actual ministry that they were going to all partake of. And be end with the baptism that I am baptized with, with all shall ye Notice, shall they? Because they weren't, they weren't ready yet. Shall ye be baptized? See, they weren't ready to suffer yet. They weren't ready, but there, there was a time when they were ready. Look at uh, first, come to First Corinthians now. First Corinthians chapter twelve. Let's come to First Corinthians chapter twelve. I want to look at something here. First Corinthians chapter twelve about the body issue, about that bread and cup. Now, let's take a look, and you're going to notice the bread, the cup, the, the spirit, they're all in one. They're all spoken about here, 1 Corinthians 12. Look at, uh, for time's sake, look at verse 12. 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 12, look at verse 12. 1 Corinthians 12, verse 12. For as the body is one and hath many members, and all the members of that one body being many are one body, so also is Christ. Now, at this point, 
Paul already talked about the idea that the uh, when he made mention about the bread, and, and, and you know what, we're going to look at that in a second, but we, we'll just look at that, we'll just read on now, but Paul had already mentioned about the bread, when he says, um, there, we have one bread and one body, he gives, they have a definition uh, by now what the one body is, and it should be one bread, and it's the body of Christ, so he, and he's making mention that they are all members of that, and I want you to keep that in mind, that when we see the bread, it is talking about Christ's body. It's talking about ourselves in particular who are justified unto eternal life. But again, it says, for as the body is one and hath many members, all the members of that one body being many are one body. So also is, so also is Christ. Verse 13, for by one spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we bond or free, we have been all made to, notice this, drink into one spirit. Notice it says, for by one spirit. Now, what do you think that means? By one living word, are we all baptized into one body? See, that's what ought to be understood here. And if you don't understand, as I said before, the spirit, you're going to assume this means that by the Holy Ghost, we're all baptized into one body. But we become baptized into the body based upon our belief and trusting in the in, in, in the Lord and what he accomplished for us in our for our redemption to save us from the debt and penalty of sin against us. We become baptized into one body at that moment. But it's by hearing of what? The word. The word, the living word, is what gives us life. And when you see this here, for by one spirit are we all baptized into one body, and that is the case. And when you look at that uh, uh, down there in 1 Corinthians 12, um, and, and when we did the study on the spirit, well, not this time, but when I, earlier I did a uh, study on the spirit. If you like, I'll send it to you or uh, go down and get it. But... We looked at that whole, whole, the whole, all the verses here in chapter 12 about the spirit. And you see, um, it, it, it's making mention about the word of God. And you don't think so? Just go through the verses and you'll see, even just say verse 7, but the manifestation of the spirit, in other words, the manifestation of the word of God is given to every man to profit with all. For to one is given by the spirit, the word, notice word of wisdom, to another, the word of knowledge by the same spirit, and, and so on and so on. But that's that's what uh, drinking into one spirit is all about. And what do, you, what do you think that means to drink into one spirit, partake into one? It, we're all a partake of the word of God. We are all made to do that. And, and God have dealt to every man the measure of faith. And being members of one body there, you've seen the bread there, you've seen the cup. And the Lord's table itself is, is talked about as, as, as having the saints themselves understanding what that cup is. And the cup is not of a carnal nature, but it is the New Testament. And that's another thing that many people that rightly divide, divide the word of truth don't understand the New Testament, you'll have 95% will say we're not partakers of it. They And they won't give you a study on it. They'll just say they don't, you know, we're, we're not partakers of that. And the ones that will do it will give you Bible details. And they'll say, see, it says over there in Jeremiah 31, 30 through 34, and then that's it. Then the rest is, is, is talking about whatever well this is that's to israel and this is to us and i understand the distinction in the ministry folks i i, I get that i understood that years ago don't need to keep teaching on that issue there but this is vital doctrine that if we don't understand the spirit properly if we don't and just the verses i just cited there about we are made to drink into one spirit or by one spirit are we all baptized many of the people uh, uh, that don't understand the New Testament and don't understand the Lord's table, 
and don't understand our adoption as sons and don't understand the things that we've been looking at, Israel's justification unto eternal life, they don't understand that. They're, they're, they're going to remain babes, but teaching God's word of truth and cause others not to be able to grow and benefit from what's being spoken about. And, and, and by keeping people in the dark about the Lord's table, the cup, the cup of the Lord, remembering the Lord's death till he come, as he said, as oft as you do it in remembrance of me. And we're not going to bring forth remembrance of the Lord, but but uh, once every three months. That's not how God would have his, have his church to do. He would not have us to be divided. And some would fall out. You have many people that, that, that are brothers and sisters in the Lord of the same body. But then they, oh, I'm not going to deal with them anymore. We don't do our own body that way. There's no schism in our body. I mean, if we, you know, we're not going to say, oh, I'm not worried about my back. My back's killing me. But you know what? I could take something for it. I'm not thinking about that back. I'm a, no, we don't do that. We all pull, we pull together. If you, you, you stump your toe, you know, you, your, your body's going to react. You're going to grab it. You're going to say something. You're going to go get something to, 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 to ice to put on it. And you're going to, your whole body's going to rest itself and put its foot up. It's going to all pull together as one. That's what God would have us to be and do as one body have this have the same care. We, we, can't, we can't divide ourselves. We don't have the right or reason to think we can do that. Even though we 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 do th that's not how God would have you to walk. Partake of one another. That's that's um eating of the bread unworthily is what that's doing. Remember, we are one body and one bread. But let's move on. Come over to 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Let's look at the bread issue there. Let's look at the bread itself. And, uh, oh, boy, look at the time. Man, <laughs> I do it every time. <laughs> look at look at um, uh, uh, 1 Corinthians 10. Look at verse 15. 1 Corinthians 10, verse 15. I speak to as wise men, judge ye what I say. The cup of blessing which we bless. Is it not the communion of the blood of Christ, the bread which we break? Is it not the communion of the body of Christ? For we being many are one bread and one body, for we are all partakers of that one bread. Now, notice the cup of blessing which we bless. Is it not the no, Notice it's, it's something you, we ought to do. Is it not the communion, the, the fellowship? of the blood of Christ? It, it ought to be. It, and, and what do you think the blood of Christ, the, commu the, the cup and the blood of Christ is? I'll tell you what it, you're going to see it in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, when the Lord may mention, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. The same thing, folks, and many will tell you, we're not even to partake of. We're not even under the New Testament, they'll tell you. And I understand Israel, the Israel is uh, what it says over there in Jeremiah 31, 31. And we, we, went at, we looked at that last week. But we are partakers of the New Testament according to the revelation of the mystery. Being sanctifying ourselves, being sanctified by his word, by the New Testament, that through their Israel's fall, instead of their rise, Verse 16 again, the cup of blessing which we bless, is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? The bread which we break, is it not the communion of the body of Christ? Now, how do you think, what bread do you think he's talking about? Some would think that we're to break bread here as a wafer. You'll go to uh, the so-called Christian bookstore and they'll buy the little box of bread and or, or little, uh, little wafers and and all these things, the same thing the Catholics buy. But he says in verse 17, for we being many are one bread and one body, but we are all partakers of that one bread. He just tells you here what the one bread is. We, we are the one body and one bread. 
and we are for we are all partakers of that. What he just made mention, we're, we're partakers of that bread and body. Look at verse 21 now. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. You cannot be partaker of the Lord's table and the table of the devils. Now, you see what he's making mention here. He just made mention about over in first in, in first Corinthians chapter 10 about being tempted of the world. He's explaining to them, you he desires that they do one or the other, that they drink a cup of the Lord. That's what they ought to drink do is drink the cup of the Lord. And um be partakers of the bread of the Lord and actually the partakers of the Lord's table. That's the definition of what he shows. And that's why when I say I will call the Lord's table because he gave you a definition in verse 17 and verse 20 and, and verse, uh, verse 17 there, actually verse 16 and 17, the cup and the bread. Uh, come over to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11 now. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. And look at verse 23. And just we'll take a look at this here. 1 Corinthians 11, verse 23. For I have received the, of the Lord that which I also delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. Now see, that's what we got to look at. The night the Lord was betrayed, not when he was at the table and said, eat, uh, uh, take, eat, this is my body and all this. I'm not saying we're not worried we're to discard that as well, but I'm saying... The heart of the matter is the night the Lord was betrayed is what he's bringing into remembrance to these Corinthians. And a lot of things happened that night. He explained to them in John 13 about being one. And he said, a new commandment I give unto you that ye love one another. Then he told them about an a, a example I give unto them in John 13 about that they love one another and be ones as not those that, that, that uh, want to have lordship over others but one that serveth. Then he tells them about uh, uh, the ministry, the cup. Then he tells them about the they, they be a one, the bread. Then he actually gets out the element and said, hey, look, this is the cup, which, you know, as often as you do this in remembrance of me, drink of it in remembrance of me as oft. Then he broke the bread and said, take it. He told him the cup. Drink eat all of it. You all have part in the ministry. This it, it shouldn't be hard to hard to grasp. <laughs> but then he says here um, in verse um, twenty four, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, "Take eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me." Remember, it says, "This do in remembrance of me." So as I said before, how often should we do the communion or fellowship? How often should we do that in remembrance of the Lord? Even if it was once a week, that's still not oft enough. After the same manner, he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. See, you know, you have people that are babes teaching God's word of truth. And they'll teach that um, Acts 28 position and they'll say, well, the reason why Paul says this over here and Second Corinthians chapter three about the New Testament is because he was talking to the little flock. And, and you have those guys that say that stuff. And that's because they are babes in Christ and they actually cannot handle, as Paul says, I speak to as wise men, judge ye what I say. They're not wise in Christ. They're, they're wise in the wisdom of this world. And there are many of them that, that um, think that way. And it's, it, it's actually a shame. It's actually a shame is what it is. But look at uh, uh, verse 25. After the same manner, he took the cup when he supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament of my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat. Notice this. This bread and drink this cup. Now, wait a minute. Remember he said, drink ye all of it. And then he passed, broke bread and passed it around. Ye do shew the Lord's death till he come. They knew exactly what the Lord was talking about. They didn't assume it meant 
that the Lord wanted them to get around it and do that same exact thing. If, if that was the case, folks, think about this. Who was going to be passing the bread around? The Lord wasn't going to be there. Which one of them was going to be passing the bread? Which one of them was going to be in the Lord's place? And see, that, that that's what the priest does. When the priest goes and he's handing it out and people are coming and they're, 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 they're putting their head down and uh, they're taking some wafer out of his mouth, out of his hand, and he's putting it in their mouth. He's acting as if he's the Lord. And, and see, that's that that's man exalting himself. But look at um uh but verse 26 again for us often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Remember, this is in 1 Corinthians, folks. This is in 1 Corinthians, and Paul is saying to us, we have to, as often as we do it. That's the bread is partaking of each other in love. Uh, drinking the cup is the cup of the New Testament. That's the ministry. For as often as ye do the ministry, for as often as ye show one another in selfless love, how, uh, we're, how we're to walk. Remember, we looked at the New Testament and we talked about you can fulfill love is the fulfilling of, of the of, of the law of, of the um, of the law. That's the law of God. That's the New Testament. Look at verse 27. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread. Notice you can do it. Yeah, you can eat it regardless. You're going to partake of it, of each other. But you could do it either in love or you can do it not in love. Whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup unworthily. That's what that's saying unworthily is. Remember 1 Corinthians 10, 21. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. You cannot be partaker of the Lord's table and the table of devils. That's what it's talking about. Look at, uh, again, verse 27. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. Now, remember, the cup of the Lord is the ministry of the Lord. That's what's being spoken of, the New Testament shall be noticed guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. You see how the body is used as bread again? Well, what is the body of the Lord, folks? You know what the body is. We are the body of the Lord. We can be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. And what that means is guilty of not, of not operating the way you ought to with the body itself in love. What first Corinth, what chapter uh, Romans chapter 12 tells us, that we are, mem all, we are members of one another. We're to value and esteem others more than ourselves. Be not high-minded. You, you, you should, you, we, we just seen in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 about uh, we're all made to drink into one spirit. We are, we are, uh, we being many, we ought to show selfless love toward each other. And you see here, you can be guilty of not doing that Operate upon that if you uh, are have one foot in this world. Look at verse 20. Uh, Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily uh, shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. Again, the, the body of the Lord is, it is mentioned. Remember, there's divisions among them. And if there's divisions, they're not discerning the Lord's body themselves. They are being divided. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you and many sleep. When he says Many for this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. He's not talking about that because they're not eating, that they're weak and sickly, that they just want to eat something and they're going to meet as a church, and then when they get there, all the food is gone, or someone saying, "Oh no, no, no," or they're just checking it in, getting here and eating all the food. That's not what's being spoken of. Remember. As I said before, Paul said, have ye not houses to eat and drink in? They could have went home and ate. 
The weak and sickly being spoken about here is the idea that they are not having care for one another. As when you see over over in uh, um, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, when he says, they have not, you have not care for one another. That's why they're not having the same care for one another. In verse 25, that there should be no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care for one for another. That's what that's about there. And you know, the weak and sickly were ones who were not the who people were not having care for them and, and they were they didn't they didn't have or they people were not showing uh the love that they ought to the selfless love for them people were not the ones that were doing it were not partaking of the bread of the lord they were eating of the bread of the lord but they were doing it unworthily and you know we'll, we'll, we'll get back into this next week there um but you know i, I when I look at this issue here, um, went over the doctrine, I got it all together and things like that. I talked to many, many pastors that rightly divide the word of truth about this. I sent emails to 90% of them, and many didn't get back to me on them. And some that did, they went all around about, about it. And some said, oh, you're making too much of it, or, or you're throwing things against the wall, hoping something sticks, and all these other things. I've sat down with them. Uh, some of them I sat down with them for many, many hours. And they, yeah, you're you're reading too much in it. You're using too many verses. I was told, and and all these things because sometimes certain certain people actually, when people say that, they don't want to give you the 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 act. They don't want to give you the opportunity to present them with something because they feel maybe, wow, well, how can he tell me something? And but it's the doctrine, it's the word, and, and what I come to understand is that they weren't they weren't there yet. And, and they weren't spiritually mature enough to be able to ingest the doctrine. And, and I gave them more credit to, uh, to, to assume that, well, maybe they'll see this and maybe they can. Yeah, but they, they're lacking the New Testament. They're lacking the spirit. They're lacking Israel's justification to eternal life. They're lacking all those other foundational doctrines. And that's why. It, it'll just go right over their heads. And they'll say, oh, he's he, he's out there. But again, folks, you know, um, you have to do the work of um of of uh ones who are who who desire to to understand and know his word. To one ones that, that desire to do to, to partake of the Lord's um uh, table. Do you want to drink of the Lord's cup unworthily? Do you want to uh, eat of the bread of the Lord unworthily? Hey, you see, we can. Or we can eat a, a drink of the Lord, cup of the Lord worthily. So let a man exa examine himself and let him drink and let him eat of that bread, a cup, partake of the uh, Lord's table. He says, as oft as you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. And, and folks, this is something that we ought to do in remembrance of the Lord. In doing it, is what we're doing right now. It's not a uh, partaking in, a, in, in an element. There's no physical element to, 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 to serving him. There's no physical element at all to serving the Lord. It's all done spiritual. Of course, there's an act of opening his word and things of that nature, but you can have a person that's blind themselves or a person that um, a, a, a paralyzed or whatever can still partake of the ministry, can partake of the table of the Lord. Hey, you see uh, the guy Stephen Hawking himself, a guy was paralyzed, um, but he was an atheist. And, and, he, and there was so much ungodliness that, that he produced because he had a voice, even though it was a computerized voice, but he spread a lot of lies. And he did a lot of damage, even though he was... He, he, he couldn't do any any physical he couldn't even speak but he, it was all it was all computerized something he he couldn't even move but again as I'm saying what I'm saying is that that the cup of the Lord the bread of the Lord is something that we ought to do as oft to remember in remembrance of the Lord 
We ought to be partakers of one another in love. And the cup is the ministry, the ministry of the Lord, the New Testament. So next week, again, we're going to look at the Lord's table. And we're going to be looking at the uh, issue there about the Lord's table and, and how we can be partakers of one another in love and and um, and things like that there. But um, what I'm going to get ready to do is open things up for the Q&A session. And star six one will get you into the queue when I get there. Okay. Okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, that this is something that we ought to come to understand that about the Lord's table, about the cup, what the definition of the spirit, the, the, the New Testament, as I said before, and, and understanding that you can't get around that the, those different those doctrines there about the spirit and about the the cup or even the bread and the new testament because you have to just skip right over first corinthians chapter 13 and most uh, ch chapter uh 11, 10 and 11 to, to and and because many do not understand that because some brethren didn't do a study on it yet so they they don't they don't want to get it they don't want to understand it or should i say some brethren that did not, that they trust, did not do a study on it. So they're going to just speculate and say, well, we're just not to do it. I guess he would have done a study on it by now. But, folks, this is vital that we get this because if we do not understand those doctrines, the things that what I, we, I may mention there, what's going to happen is a person going to end up a Corinthian. There is going to be divisions among the body of Christ as a whole. If we do not understand the vital doctrines that's found there. But what we're going to do is um, I'm going to get ready to uh, to close. And uh, let's see. <laughs> we'll get ready to close. And then again, next time again, like I said, because we ran over. Uh, next time we're going to be looking at um, uh, the New Testament. We're going to be looking at the Lord's Table. We're going to finish up with that, and then hopefully we'll get into the adoption of sons uh, next time, which is another subject that many people, another doctrine that people um, do not understand. But we'll get into that next time there.